Good evening, people. Tis me, again, Soda, Music Survival Guide Podcast. It's April 19th. You know the drill. You'll get this thing in a few days. Uh, tonight, we don't have a guest. It's me, and it's your favorite monkey, once again. If you're not sick of us yet, that's good. Maybe give us another shot. But, um... We had an idea for tonight, and, you know, everybody's busy scheduling anything nowadays. It's very difficult, so we couldn't get anybody to come in to be part of this quote-unquote roundtable that we wanted to do for tonight. Uh, we are very close to the anniversary of Prince's passing second year, which will be the, the 21st, so that'll be Saturday. Um, so we wanted to do a little tribute episode. You know, we wanted to just hang out with people and talk about Prince, really. Um, You know, people die all the time, obviously. Uh, Relatives, friends, people that inspire you. And um, as far as Prince goes on the spectrum of people that have been influential to me as artists, his passing was kind of like losing a a distant relative for whatever reason. Same thing with with Kurt Cobain. I mean, there's been lots of artists that I love that have come and gone. You feel it, but, you know, it it changes over time. But, man, with Prince, it's like... You really really miss the guy. I never met him. I never met him. I didn't know him, obviously. Uh, I only saw him play one time, and it was actually in Ohio, and it was beautiful, wonderful, amazing show, and it was when he was supporting Musicology, which is probably one of my favorite Prince records, actually. Um, this is a topic that, obviously, you can go on and on and on and on and on and on about for hours, hours, and days and days, and that, it, it would be more if more people were here, but Monkey's here with me, and he's he's getting, it looks like he's getting comfy, so. Yeah, sorry, guys, yeah, I'm just, uh trying to get as comfortable as possible uh, uh i did really really want to have a like so to say like a round table discussion with at least two or three people yeah. so, but instead just picture you know soda is visiting me at, in prison and it's just me and him <laughs> kind of looking at each other with you know the glass between us and uh just decided to have this conversation about uh <laughs> Probably one of the most uh, iconic yeah. musicians to ever, ever walk the earth. Yeah, and that that sounds like such a huge statement, but it, it's really, really quite true. It is. It definitely um, is. Sure. I mean, I, I, uh, I'm a little ashamed to say that uh, I became a Prince fan after his death. Okay, and and there's nothing to be ashamed I'm, I'm of. Probably, I mean, yeah, probably not alone there either because it, no. it, it happens. But uh, what was always very, very uh, true when he was alive, and uh, what little I did know of Prince was that uh, the guy was uh, a Rembrandt. He was a savant. He uh, was famous for being a better musician than the musicians he actually hired to play. You know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, I mean, you had to be um, completely prepared and ready and on top of your game, like, to a whole other level, because he'd, he'd put you on the spot. He'd well, yeah. kind of call you out on it, you know. Um, there's a zillion stories. Some are sweet and funny by the way things were delivered, and some were very chaotic and scary you know what i mean he he scared people and and he made them laugh and cry all at the same time you know within like the same couple of seconds as far as working with him goes again i don't i never met prince which i think we would have hit it off i think we would have hit it off actually um there, there's so many songs and for me, Prince came into my life through my sisters because they listen. Now, I don't necessarily come from a musical family. I come from a family of people that listened to a lot of music and enjoyed it, but they weren't like out playing music and they weren't making art and all this other stuff. I think this, we, we mentioned this in another episode. My, my father dug country music. My mother loved Elvis. My sisters were into like disco and new wave and all that stuff. And I remember 
one of my sisters more than the other was listening to Prince very, very heavily. She actually got to see Prince and the revolution, which I will always have an envious spot in my heart toward her for that, which is, which is pretty amazing. Like I said, I only got to see him once in Ohio for musicology, which is, which is great. Cause I do, I love, love, love that record. Um, Seeing Prince live also was like just this crazy event. It was it was a party. It was really a party. People were so excited and so fun. It's almost like music is meant to be this thing that kind of makes you forget about all the craziness in life, whether you play it or you listen to it or you go to see shows. And Prince... I think really, really achieved that on a whole bunch of levels for people that listen to his music. Because we were saying before, if, if you liked his rock stuff, but you don't really maybe like the R and B stuff, that's okay. Because then you can go on to the acoustic stuff. You can go on to the soul stuff. You can go on to like the experimental stuff. I mean, every territory was covered. I mean, I don't know what stone was, you know, wasn't left unturned as far as sounds go with him. You know, he was, what, 18, I think, when the first record came out. The Unknown, you know what I mean? Very talented young guy, obviously. And, um, you know, he said to the label, he was like, I'm writing, producing, recording, mixing, whatever, my entire first record on my own. And... That's the way it is. They let him do it. Who the hell gets that? Like a multi-record contract, a virtually unknown artist, kind of like, I'm doing everything, leave me alone, I'm going to put out records yeah, and everything he, will be cool. He was notorious for... Uh, <laughs> like, for uh, oh, nuts. He'd have like A&R guys come into the control room and listen to what he's been recording, and then they would say something, they would comment, whatever it was. And he was notorious for being like, tell him to leave the studio, get him out of my studio, like, uh, he gave two fucks about what anybody really thought, because well, he was in control from the, from the beginning. From the beginning. From the beginning. That is... I don't know who has ever achieved uh, that. I think, I think, I think uh, a close second might have been Ray Charles, but, I mean, seriously. Yeah. There's, yeah, you, that's, that's unheard cool. of. It's unheard of. It's it is. Unheard it's of. unheard of. At that age? I mean, yeah, Jesus. no. He was, he was a baby, and um, he was a beast. A beast, a beast, a beast. The first Prince record, 1978. 1978. That record was called For You. And now, that thing starts with the title track, and it's acapella. And it is so stunning and horrifying and just out of this world. I love that album. That's probably... Oh gosh, because there's so many. That that might be in my top five. Um, that whole record is really interesting because it's still a record that is like yet to happen, in a sense. Even though it came out in 1978, it was just so bizarrely ahead of its time that it that it is kind of it's crazy. It's scary. It's peculiar it's weird it's wonderful um because i mean i listen you know i have I'm, I'm a big collector of music i have a very very dense collection of stuff but i have the little uh the little i the little ipod here that you know holds a twenty thousand plus songs you know from my personal collection i can't walk around town with a backpack full of rare cds you know um and i'll listen to that next to like a record that just came out last week and there's no, still no contest i'm like what the hell <laughs> what 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 is going on here it's just really really funny and peculiar and i don't know what prince thought of that record you know i don't know if if that was one that he kind of just like i ah, forget it it's 30 what plus 38 years old or something like that if he didn't care about it if he didn't think about it anymore whatever if he hated it if he loved it you know i don't know what he might give you a different answer every day of the week if you asked him about hey prince what do you think about for you i love it 
Tuesday, hey Prince, what do you think about for you? No comment. You know, Wednesday, hey Prince, what do you think about for you? It's garbage. It's garbage. <laughs> um, you know, you know, he 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 loved to play games too. He was he was a sweet joker. Um, would, you, would you say that album was a, a funk album? R and B. I'd say was it's it? it's like a, an R and B slash rock slash progressive record in okay. a sense because the last track I'm yours is like a psychedelic classic rock song as f- as as classic as a classic rock song can get mm-hmm. you've never heard that right man it, I'm telling you you, you gotta you we're want, gonna talk you about play it you want to play it I actually would love when we were uh formulating the idea for this i was thinking like how the hell are we gonna do this yeah you know um i i wanted to play for you like the the title track the okay. acapella intro and then driving around today because i drove around a lot and i was listening to a lot of music i was like man i gotta get in in the in, in the purple print zone for sure so i was listening to i'm yours and i'm like oh my god it's just wild i mean we could play the whole thing, the whole the whole record, you know. Monkey, Monkey was like, "Oh yeah, well, let's play all these songs and we'll get sued." And I'm like, "That I guess that's okay because people will take more notice of our podcast." And you know, we make so very much money off of doing this. It's the Barbara Streisand effect. You know? I think uh, what we've made so far was maybe like eight bucks in macaroons, and that was from our, our buddy Tris that came on for the last episode. This is the tenth episode, so we're in double digits, which is kind of cool. Thanks, Trist, for coming out last time. That was really fun. We were yeah. talking about how you, or that you, you, you got some feedback saying that that was like the favorite episode from some people that have been listening to us, right? Well, it was. Uh, it was finally um, uh, some true comedy from our guest. Yeah, she. You we know, were it, ten seconds in laughing, she, laughing into she, that yeah, thing. She was I'm like, God damn, girl. Yeah, she uh great sense of humor. Yeah, she's a trip. Uh, Tris, she, yeah, she's a big personality. She's a good time. She's a good person. A good person. What's a person? Female a f- person. F- there you go. She was the first female guest. So she was our first person. Or a furry. <laughs> a furry. A furry person. You're kind of furry monkey. Would you be a person? I'm not a person. I'm like average hairy we can but, talk about furry but anyway, we don't podcast. need to get into body hair yet yet uh, yet yeah, anyway the night is young but um yeah let's let's play for you or i would say we could flip a coin but now man let's play for you it's just it's the first track on the first prince record from 1978 it's stunning you know all right so let's do it the vocal arrangements are just out of this world man here we go for you for you Is that not just so wonderful for those of you that don't know some of the earlier Prince stuff? Or if you know it all, you probably know more than me. You probably know less than me. I mean, there's Dave Alvin, who came on the show from White Trash, has like... I mean, if you were to to actually weigh it on a scale, if it was possible, the amount of sound that Dave possesses from Prince, it probably weighs like... I don't know, close to fifty pounds. If you wanted to, yeah, I wish, I wish uh, he could have been here because uh, I do remember uh, the episode where he was on, and, and we did bring it up. I think, um, uh, you know, off off the air. Yeah, no, he. I, I don't know. We was also mentioned. We air? also we also um, we also talked uh, um, heavily about Prince, and and then the, off the air, the possibility of doing a little roundtable discussion. Uh, with the other with, the, with the, our other guest uh, Andy. Andy Andy Blackshirt, Andy, yeah, yeah. Um, seems to be a trend. There seems to be this common denominator, and it's got to be worldwide. You know, what I mean, that's how that's how good this guy was. Um, well, yeah, for sure. But that, again, that that that's you know, I mean, if you were like a hard rock guy, Prince had something for you. If you were like. A pop girl, Prince had something for you. If you were like, I well, mean, to, to what I was saying earlier too, is that he was amazing at every instrument, at and, every instrument, but also like at moving 
Sure, sure. You couldn't you couldn't measure the guy's charisma. You couldn't. I mean, may, maybe who else? Maybe Elvis is like a contender as far as like a charismatic performer. You know what? I doubt Elvis could hold a hold a candle if she gave him you know a Fender jazz bass or something. Well, no, not as far as like a, a musician. But that's but this is my point. See, I, I, I uh, like I said, I, I, I didn't because really, there I, are there are few people that can hold a candle to the greatness that was what he did as a musician, as a songwriter. Um, sometimes as a lyricist, you know, there are some questionable lyrics with Prince that are kind of like eh, but. You know, it's kind of okay because then you're like, oh well, he just made up for that anyway with like the the weirdo psycho arrangement that sure. goes along with this song. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm not, I mean, I definitely I'm not arguing that. But what I'm trying to get at is that um, how many musicians out there, a professional amateur status, what have you, can honestly say that uh, they could, you know, they could play a gig virtually on any instrument if anybody really needed them to. You know? There is there is one guy I'm that sure I have brought up sure funny. before that I in particular <coughs> would say would be the one person e- that couldn't fill Prince's shoes, but could um maybe you know be, be in that be in that zone. And I I think Nuno Betancourt would be that that person. Okay. I don't say that because I I love Nuno. I worship Nuno, you know, since I was a little kid. But he's he's a beast too. Another tiny little guy. I mean, Prince is five three. Nuno's taller than that. Yeah. For those who don't know, Nuno Betancourt, the guitar player for Extreme. Yeah, Extreme. That's more likely what you know him. But I mean, he played for Rihanna for about seven years, okay. which was fairly re- recent within like the last decade, or whatever. And that. Finally, finally, after all that time, that got him more the more notice that he w- deserved for the past twenty years. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I think Extreme is more popular now than they even were when they were really, really heavily. It's doing possible. Extreme. I just think I feel like Extreme kind of had the bad luck of being in the shadow of a lot of other bands at the time. I, I agree with that. They were also really hard to classify. Mm-hmm. Um, because they were they they had their their hands in a lot of sounds, mm-hmm. um, you know. I mean, especially like, I mean, the first extreme record is really like a, a funky metal record. You know, you can kind of say like, all right, all these songs kind of belong together. Then you get into porno graffiti, and it's it's more conceptual. There, there's like the the more than words is on that record, which is like a zillion dollar ballad. Sure, you know. Whether it was a hit or not, whether you discovered Extreme that way, I mean, it's it's a classic song. There's lots of classic songs on porn and graffiti. Then you get three sides to every story, which is heavily. It's it's such a dense record. It's so it's so difficult to imagine how those guys put that together. And then waiting for the punchline, which was like they're really pissed off at everybody. Record you could tell it was kind of the end of the band at the time. Uh-huh. Uh, just the sounds, and I mean, Gary was screaming on that record, and Gary Sharon didn't scream on Extreme Records. And then you know, years you talk about the singer, yeah. Well, he got he got pretty much royally screwed by Van Halen too. Well, that was after Extreme, and um, I, I'm not I'm I'm Extreme is heavily influenced by Van Halen. Right. I am really not necessarily a Van Halen person. I understand it a little bit. They are clearly talented. Eddie Van Halen, I know, inspired they were, they were a kinda, zillion. They were, they were kind of known to like take singers and put them through the meat grinder, you know. Yeah, but not even not even Van Halen. The the Van Halen enthusiasts gave Gary, you know, it was it was very unfair. Well, of course, I mean, you know, David, David Lee Roth, David Roth had an incredible today, entertainer. To this, to this day, incredible entertainer. The most, one of the most faithful like uh, armies out there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but fans. then Sammy Hagar too. I mean, that was a thing. Even, that even, even though, even then, I'm saying, even then, like Sammy Hagar could, you know, they he he did have a moment where they put out some really good singles. But oh, yeah. um, you know, it, it all comes down to the scene in uh, in in uh, Airheads. 
where, <laughs> where you know where the fake cop comes in, acting, pretending like he's a he's a you know he's a music executive or something, and they say, they ask him was like you know Sammy Hagar or David Lee Roth, and he literally goes Sammy Hagar like you're a cop, you know you're you're a fucking <laughs> you're a sellout, that's, and like that kind of summed it up right there, like a whole generation of people who would you know who were way be, you know way behind uh, David Lee Roth, and when he got when he came back. I think for Van Halen fans, that was like hell froze over. It was the Eagles reunion. It was, you know, John yeah, Bonham well, came back to life kind of shit. And, yeah, well, when David Lee Roth came back, they, they, there was a lot of drama, too. Those guys were like... But still, it's, like, but that's my point. It's like still, the, the Van Halen machine... They couldn't machine, play in the same sandbox, really. The Van Halen machine is notorious for taking singers and just putting them through the meat grinder. Because, you know, what do you got? You got Eddie Van Halen, one of the greatest guitar players. Right, and of all Alex. Time. And then you got Alex, who's just basically a really good drummer who shares his last name. Yeah, but they screwed over Michael Anthony though too uh, I don't know enough about Michael Anthony to speak I mean it, you know, yeah, that television. guy was like the roots you right, know but, he kept the tree but, from who kinda, beca- but who becomes the bass player for Van Halen Wolfgang uh, but also, little, also little Eddie yeah that's what I'm saying it's like uh, they, they basically just kind of I don't know. I, anyway. I love I love Van Halen, and yeah, I, yeah we're going we're going off no, topic. That's cool. Well, you know, I mean, we we could talk about a hundred. I, I was kind of I was kind of hoping that maybe you might know if Prince ever did any really interesting collaborations with Eddie Van Halen with anybody with anybody. The, apparently, the vault that was pried open upon Prince's passing has a the, lot the, of the vault being a, a physical. Safe, Low, an actual, an yeah, actual yeah, room in yeah, his, no, and his, uh, a, a his zillion complex. recordings, yeah, yeah, and, at Paisley Park, yeah. Let's paint. Let's paint this picture real quick. All right, imagine the White House. All right, because uh, I just I just found this out recently. But imagine a building the size of the White House. Mm-hmm. That's basically um, uh, Paisley Park, mm-hmm. uh, Prince's um, home. Right. And what he did was he built baby. he built um, uh, a complex big enough to hold. Um, rooms large enough to store all his uh, experimental wardrobe. Uh, he, he had uh, rooms big enough to um, build uh, control rooms, you know, uh, studios, well, there uh, was sound like, stages. Yeah, he, he right. literally had a, a huge sound stage. Sound stage. I mean, he he became the quintessential. Uh, I don't need anybody mm-hmm. musician because he literally had his own. Soundstage where he can practice live shows yep. with the band fully dressed. Why leave home? Yeah, exactly. Why leave home? Why leave like, home? It's the, it, like the dream for me, at least. Um, and in yeah. this, in this, you know, in the inner corner of that of that uh, of his house, he had a vault, a yep. bank vault, yep. where he would store his songs. And this guy worked. 20 hours a day uh-huh. you know he would yes. have engineers coming on shifts because mm-hmm. they couldn't keep up with the guy yeah no i mean you know, it was they would it rehearse was, they would rehearse in full full attire full mm-hmm. dress rehearsals all the time it was yeah i mean it wasn't i mean very very like it was no super controlling mm. who knows what the actual i mean obviously the people that were there they know but you can imagine it bordered on tedious it bordered on excessive but you also had to kind of take a step back and then ask yourself, you know, where are you? You're rehearsing yeah, with the Prince. Point. Yeah, this is the thing. This right? is this is the job. This is the yeah. lifestyle. You know, there's probably a million people that would slit your throat to have your job. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> enjoy it while you can. And yeah, no, the, the, the vault itself though is pretty. Int- <laughs> you know, yeah, they, they, they unearthed a lot of. Uh, I mean, we were talking about it at home, maybe shortly after Prince passed, when they got in there, and the list of stuff that was kind of uncovered was like, holy cow, holy cow, holy cow, what, 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 shit, this person, that person, what? Yeah, so much uh, stuff. Just uncovering a tomb <laughs> in Egypt. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's wild, but um, back to back to even before like how I got into Prince was, you know, because one of my sisters more over than the other was heavily listening to Prince. She got to see the revolution, actually, which was incredible. You know, she was super young. She went, she she was, she started getting out to shows a lot, too, when she was really young, which was really cool. And then when I got a little bit older, she started to, like, escort me to my shows because I was too young. And she, she literally escorted me to shows that I was playing and bands that I wanted to see, so it was really cool. We always had that kind of musical bond, too. But I knew... With Purple Rain, after hearing a lot, 
in the house. It was very intriguing. It was confusing. It was complex. It was, uh, it was dirty. It was kind of like, oh my God, am I allowed to listen to this? You know, being like a young kid. Um, incredible. And then from there, I mean, I, I expanded on a lot of different types of music and everything. And then when I got a little bit older and kind of circled back around to Prince when I got more and more into him and I understood him and I understood music more and the this and the that of stuff that that makes music happen, I was kind of like, hmm, this is really wild stuff. Um, One of my closest friends is uh, Prince, you know, diehard. Uh, she has a symbol on her back. Really nice piece. Um, but let, let's, maybe we'll play another song. I have, like I said, I have my little iPod here with tons and tons of Prince music in it. Look, I mean, you, you, you uh, stirred my curiosity with that, that other track. That uh, Which one? You, you talked about the last track on the uh, first album. I oh, on For You. Yeah. I'm Yours. Yeah, well, you just mentioned... You want to you want to play that? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's somebody out there that was listening at the time and said they might want to you know listen to it. And I definitely want to yeah, listen to it. Yeah, that's so. cool. It's just it, insane. It's just an insane song. You're like the way you described it, though. It was uh, it's crazy. A very it's crazy. Classic mm-hmm. rock. It is. It is a classic psychedelic rock tune. Yeah, for sure. What? What the hey? Let, let's do it. Um, Again, off of For You from 1978, the last track, I'm Yours. All right, so, I'm Yours. I mean, again, if you've never heard that one before, aren't you like, what the hell? I need to go and get the For You record, whether I'm going to download it right now or order it off Amazon or go to one of the few standing record stores that still exist that might have a bunch of print stuff. And again, for a perspective, it. that album was released before the guy turned 20, before he could legally... Well, maybe at the time, 18 was drinking age, I'm not sure. I don't know. Yeah, I don't yeah know. but still, I mean, what was he? 16, 17? Yeah, I think it was 18. 18 when and, he released the album? Yeah, I think uh, so. So, I mean... Wild. <laughs> really, I mean, you gotta laugh because it's so nuts. But, um... Again, I was listening to, I, I was trying to think of like a lot of like my favorite Prince songs because there are so many, whether it's like, I was like, oh man, but this album, that album, this album, that song, whatever. Maybe a couple of like deeper cuts, not like totally six feet under cuts, but like maybe middle of the road cuts. There is, um, She's Always in My Hair, which is one of my favorite, 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 favorite Prince songs because it is just like, a solid like glam rock song almost you know it's 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 sexy and it's it's just got a vibe to it and i remember when i first heard that song i was like god i was like this might be one of my favorite prince songs like right away after listening to all these other hundreds of prince songs i'm like man this one sticks out it's it's just a good rock song and there's like a it's glammy to me too it's really it's a really, really neat song. So I know we just played one, but I want to play another song because there's so many, and we don't need to talk all Keep them coming, keep them coming. So She's Always In My Hair. If you don't know this one, yeah, it's great. So She's Always In My Hair. All right, so She's Always In My Hair, one of my favorite songs from Prince. There are so many. Yeah, do, do it again. So, that was. That was. Yeah, that was. She's always in my hair. You know what I'm saying? Oh, again, do it again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was. <laughs> she's always in my hair. We're giggling. We're giggling. But uh, that's good. So. <laughs> that was. That was. That was a great song. That is a great song. Um. So yeah, I mean, the early Prince stuff is great, and then when he happened with the revolution when purple rain impacted and it was monstrous because he had like a number one record they had a number one record they had a number one movie they had a number one single it was like bang 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 you know it's like ooh, god how do you even how do you handle that but um 
Yeah, another thing too. Like, who's this guy that wants to make this movie about his life already? And like, he's just like, I'm doing this. People are like, yeah, I guess. And there you go. It's like a massive success. It's a cool movie. I love Purple Rain. It's it's really honest. It's it's pure because it's not perfect. And you know, Prince wasn't necessarily an actor. He was good at it, but you know, there was like he had great eyes. He, he just had, had he just had eyes that kind of looked. He had great eyes. Very, he had, very piercing. He had a he had a smirk that I always love. The the Prince smirk is I think really that, yeah, cute. Yeah, I also think there's a misconception where with his height, uh, a lot of people say he was like four eleven. He was five three. He was five three. Yeah. I mean, he heals all the time. Yeah, and that also aided yeah, in we'll, his we'll pain. The, yeah, I want to get to that way down the road. But um, he yeah he basically wore heels all the time. Yeah, and all the time. Yeah. Um, and he 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 did all of that dancing in those things, which is crazy. The most incredible uh, microphone stand techniques I've mm. ever seen. Oh yeah, for sure. I've ever seen. Like the guy would push the stand away, do like a, a, a like a three sixty spin. <laughs> yeah, he would do a say. split. Yeah, come back up, step on the stand just in time to oh, yeah. so that the stand would bounce back. Unreal. And then he would let the stand bounce off his chest he would do another move he would sing his line push it away do it like he would do that like multiple times like he had this uh samurai ability you know what i'm saying like this yeah, he was martial nin- art ninja. ability to manipulate Ish. the the microphone stand which is you know a, a metal stick on a round you know he was a one. super heavy cylinder it's essentially yeah. it's a it's a metal base you know, and you know, there's guys that you know they want to you know throw in the theatrics, mm. and he's doing it with three, maybe four inch heels, effortless and, though. Yeah, with a guitar, completely on, effortless, with a guitar on him or something. You know, yeah, some completely kind of effortless. Um, he was, you know, very, very energetic on stage from the the footage that I've seen, and it was, you know, it's hard to replicate. So. Right, energetic. There's a word I think that hasn't been invented yet because energetic is not even, it doesn't suffice because they, he, or whoever he was with at the time, whatever band art, you know, they would go and they do like this mega arena show for like two and a half hours. And then they'd like skedaddle to like a hole in the wall in town somewhere else and play all night long. So you think you get up, you get dressed. And the, the outfits were different with Prince, so you had a little bit more time in getting dressed and ready for your show. Then you sound check, and then you powder your nose again. Maybe you eat, maybe you go to the bathroom, then you play for two and a half hours, then you get into a car. You know, you're set up, you sound check again a little bit, then you play like fucking six hours. When does the guy sleep? When does the guy sleep? Because there's only another show the next day. How do you get there? Oh, well. <laughs> when do you sleep? That's a good question, but I mean, everyone... It's, you, it's crazy. Yeah, it, he was a freak of nature in the most wonderful of ways. And even one of our previous guests, um, Andy Blacksugar, I remember he had posted something after Prince passed. And it was like he said something again, never again in our lifetime. Never again. Never again. Mm-hmm. And there are lots of talented people out there. I mean, Justin Timberlake is incredibly talented. You know, yeah, but he's a shitty tipper. He doesn't tip. <laughs> he um, he stiffed me on three occasions. So. Oh yeah, because yeah. Mon- monkeys. He's got this this business where I was he, I was I was uh, a shitty uh, tipper. Uh, Unbelievable. Uh, I was a, uh, a a sprocket in the cog of the Hollywood machine for a couple of years, mm-hmm. and I got to meet a few uh, a few um, celebrities and moguls. Monkey's wife met Prince. That's true. Yeah. That's interesting because I'd love to try to get her on the phone and see. Yeah, we were thinking that uh, a a funny little idea had popped up because we couldn't really get it together with people to come here in in the flesh and hang out with us. I was like, hey, monkey, what if I just like call people and we put them on speaker? And we did a little trial run because monkey's got a lot of fancy, nice mics. (laughs) We've got the Bob Barker mic on the side over here that I interviewed Vin Dombrowski with. Um and it sounded decent. So, I mean, we might just dial up a few people just completely spontaneous on the fly. They don't know I'm calling them. They're going to be like, hey. And I'm going to be like, well, what are you doing? We're recording. And I know you like Prince. So 
say something. Let's try this out. Um, we're going to call uh, my significant other, the mother of my children, the apple in my eye, uh, I'm not afraid to say my soulmate. Carla. If you believe in those Carla things. Monkey. Miss Monkey. All right. Um, she might not pick up because she, she might be breastfeeding. Yeah, or she might not. She also told me before because I arrived a little early and she made me this wonderful raspberry ginger tea that was just so delicious. Um, any ginger stuff, man. I'm like hardcore ginger. Let's see. Let's see if she uh, she picks up the phone because this this will be a first. And uh, ring ring. I'll be I'll be honored if uh, my wife is the first to be the uh, tell her a little quick story. The uh, phone guest. Let's see. So I'm gonna hit the ring ring. And I'm going to hit the speaker button. Ten bucks says you get the answering machine. Hello. Who's calling? Somebody walking down the stairs. It, that's so loud. You have reached the voicemail box of five one. Oh, let's not give away anybody's phone numbers. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was the loudest step at work. Did somebody just come down the stairs? It sounded like someone was. I thought maybe she was going to come in and be like, "Why are you calling me? Is everything okay?" <laughs> okay, I'm going to call. Um. Man, I don't know if I could get Gem on the phone. One of my. I'm just trying some of my beloveds, and so anyway, let's see if we can get somebody on the phone to, I don't ever really call her, we always are a text message conversation, and whenever I call her, she's like, why are you calling me, it's weird, but let me see, I'm going to call, well, you know what, let me call somebody that I know I can definitely get on the phone, I'm going to call one of the extended fam, I'm going to call my homegirl, Carmen, who is a very passionate person. And um, let's see. Let's see what we can do her. Get her on the phone. See if we can get somebody else's opinion about this topic. Okay. So as we try this and hope that someone gets on the phone... Yeah, everybody, everybody's busy though. What is it, Thursday night? Hello? Hello? Hey. Rob? Yeah. Where's Carmen? She's taking her shower. She's taking her shower. <laughs> oh my god, this is funny. So, you ready? You ready to laugh? Me and Monkey are doing one of our podcasts right now. Yeah. And it's, we're doing a little Prince tribute. And we are recording this. We're like randomly calling people just to get to to have them say something about Prince. Yeah. So I know that you are um, a Prince person. Yes. Do you wanna Do you wanna say something for our little for our little show here? Woody. Who Who is this? I'm sorry. This This is one of my best friends, Rob. Um, What's up, Rob? This is Monkey. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Rob and Carmen. Um, like I said, the extended fam. Um, what did What did you feel when Prince passed, Rob? What, what happened? What did you what did, what did you think? Not Not only you know I, I'm not going to go the traditional way of everybody's always like oh you know we lost and you know we just lost a, a singer we just lost you know you know our greatest artist. I don't think about it in that way. I think about it more in you know the person itself mm-hmm. of how they actually came about uh, and the struggles that he went through, right. making it within as an artist, you know, struggling for something that he loved. You know, it's the music that made him move. It's the music that encouraged him to go all this way from where he started from all the way up towards the end. Everything was about the fan. To me, that's a true artist. It's not just about. If I have a number one hit, mm. you know, if, you know, all this is done on the chart. I mean, if you really think about it, how many, how many songs does he keep kept writing and he just kept touring? You know, it's like, you're just not trying to say, right? It's, it's not just like, oh, 
we just lost Prince because everybody else was jumping on the bandwagon and we, and we have to sort of like cry about it or whatever. Mm-hmm. I guess think more about the person itself. Yeah, no, that that's a cool a cool thing. I mean, like like you mentioned about uh him really digging his his fan base because me and Monkey were saying too he, he with whatever band he was in at the time where he had like New Power Generation Revolution or his own thing when it wasn't a band really they would play you know these big arena shows and then they would go to like a little club and play all night for you you know exactly and, and right and nobody does that nobody does that nobody like does that times that he appeared somewhere. And like you know, he jumps on stage or somebody coaxes him on stage, and he just plays a number, and it's from the heart. You know? Yeah. Well, you remember that uh, not too long ago, it was was it the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame or something with Tom Petty and those other guys, yes, and yes. Prince, um, you know, gets on stage and just whips out that psycho guitar solo and like throws his guitar in the crowd and just smokes everybody, and <laughs> people are like, "What the fuck? Come on, man!" That was wild. Oh, you're talking about the um, uh, the inauguration. That was that. What it was? Yeah, yeah. It was that. that it was, was uh, a riot. It was. It was uh, George Harrison, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. yeah, that was unreal. Yeah. It was unreal. That's probably. Um, that's probably. Sorry, did he say something? What's up? Hello, all. Oh, hey, Carmen. Uh, Carmen, are you, are you out of the shower? Are you in a towel? <laughs> Hold, yeah. Car- Carmen, Carmen, can you give me like two seconds to finish this thought real quick? Uh, sure. we're, we're happy to have you on, but uh, I just I just wanted to finish this thought. Uh, we were just talking about real quick the uh, I think the George George uh, Harrison uh, being inaugurated in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and um, it turns out that Prince was invited to like the very last second to go on stage because he was actually getting inaugurated himself. Uh-huh. Uh, so he wasn't supposed to. I think um, that was very like you know spur of the moment. Yeah, spontaneous. And he goes on stage and he literally plays the solo. Of of his career, like he he, yeah. he, he does the most incredible ba- uh, guitar solo, and he, he picks he throws his guitar and he's just like that's what you guys needed to hear because that's what I am. And yeah, he, he just he walks off just like and, he walks off with a strut that's just so sick. For, for me, that was es- essentially you know what Prince was. You know, he's music. He was he was a beast. I mean, we we said that in the beginning. Uh, Rob, did Rob tell you that we're recording our little podcast and we're just randomly calling people? <laughs> he did. He did. All right, good. So this this now we we talked to Rob. The, the, again, the, these are not my friends, really. These are my extended family members that I know that are passionate about a lot of stuff. So Carmen is here now, and um, she's freshly showered. So that's a good thing. <laughs> and uh, what kind so, of shampoo do you use? <laughs> She's got very frizzy hair, so we gotta. How do we tame that thing? Uh, olive oil. Olive, all right, and egg whites, perhaps, right? What? Yes. But anyway, um, I know that you uh, are a Prince person, and actually, right after Prince died, you and I went to that little like '80s tribute night where I bought my purple flowers, and I get interviewed by the news, which was really fun. Yeah. Yeah, it was so, so much fun. Besides, besides that being a great memory for you with Prince, like, what's another really great Prince memory that you kind of are fond of that you hold near and dear to your heart? I I went to see um, Purple Rain out of the blue. Um, it was it was a date night, so he was went, and I've always loved Prince music. But when I when we went to see this movie, I sat down and I was completely in awe. By him, I found him so beautiful, and, and the way that he would look at you, and the way that he would like even in character, it was something about his eyes. It was like this That's mischievousness funny. in his eyes. Oh yeah, mischievous for sure. Monkey said the same thing about his eyes. I mentioned that he had this this smirk that would just you know you didn't know what the hell he yeah. was up to. But the eyes were piercing. He had the, the piercing. Eyes, his eyes were always piercing, and it just like it, his eyes brought you in. Um, at the same token, it, go, it gave to me, it told me, like, he had that same look, but at the same time, he could be very shy. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. He, he, he would have one look, and he, he was so many different personalities in that compact body of his, <laughs> you know? He was like a, the wild child. He was the shy one. He was the sexy one. He, um, in, when he was writing his music, though, he would just... 
sway when he was playing. It, it was like music was like coming out of every pore of his body. Uh huh. That's great. Very good. I, I just found him incredible. Like there's no word, no word. I just, he was it. <laughs> no, he was it for sure. He was. I think you need to go take a shower again. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> but um. All right, my my dears, we're going to. I'll speak to you guys later because, like I said, we're just kind of randomly calling people because we wanted people to come into the show, but we just couldn't get anybody in the flesh. So we're like, "What the hell? Let's try calling people." But thank you for uh, sharing with us. No problem. And Anytime. I will speak with you guys later. Okay. Okay. Great. All right. See you later. Take care, guys. See you later. All right. Bye. bye. All right, cool. That was fun. That was fun, and we're gonna do it again because uh, I have a, oh, I have monkey, my friend. A on, yeah, I got a friend on. Yeah, so uh, hold on a second, guys. Yeah, we're getting them. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, what's up, man? Give me one second. Let me just uh, let me just put you here on the. Uh, we're gonna put you on the the scented candle that's holding everything up. Can you hear us? Can you hear us, man? I can hear you. It sounds like you're on speakerphone. Really yeah, I got you on speakerphone. A very primitive setup, but uh, we, we, you know, we got you going through the system. I'm here with Soda. Hi. All right. Uh, Soda's gonna. Soda. Soda wants to ask you a couple questions. Uh, thank you so much for calling, man. Well, who, who do we have? Tell us. This is uh, one of my oldest friends, Ugo Ruivo. Uh, Didn't I play a show with him? Uh, yes, very good. Yes, yeah. Ugo, Ugo is the, uh, the Pearl Jam that's fanatic, right? right? <laughs> that's right. That show in uh, that bar by Jericho. It was in Bongos. Uh, it was, uh, what was it? Uh, Bongos, right? Mineola? Yeah, yeah motion Bongo's. picture. Yeah. That him that's right. and his uh, buddy. And Ugo, then, uh, Ugo representing the, the uh, Crooked Hounds. Yeah. Brothers, that's, it. that's right. That's right. Uh, Soda was the uh, second act that night, I believe. And nice. uh, you know, Rico and the Rebels killed it at the end. And uh, thank you so much for calling. But uh, Soda wants to ask you a couple of questions. Uh, hopefully, uh, we, we you know we were able to take you away from your job, but uh, <laughs> not for too long. All right? No, it's cool, man. It's all right. Cool. Well, well, thank you for for calling or you know having a couple minutes with us because we wanted to try to get some people on this little special podcast that we're doing because we're talking about Prince. So, you, um, how do you you know how do you feel about Prince? What what is your opinion? What do you think? I mean, you have a story. Uh, Prince. Uh, I got into Prince obviously late, you know. Okay. You know, not when I, not when I was a teenager and stuff like that. Uh, a little later on. Uh, and I got into him because I, you know, he came to the Coliseum in 05. Cool. And I was like, I gotta get tickets. I mean, this is Prince. And I, you know, I knew a few tunes like everybody knows, you know, the ones on the radio and things of that nature. And, uh, I was like, I gotta go. I gotta go to the show. So we got tickets. Uh, I couldn't believe it at the, at the same time because mm-hmm. it's like it's, it's Prince, so it's you know it's going to be sold out. Right. Uh, and uh, man, he blew me away. Blew sure. me away. He was phenomenal. And you know, after that, then I got into you know started getting his his, his library, his works. And Good. He's you know he was amazing. It was amazing. I mean, how can you not love a guy that that you know plays twenty instruments and writes his own albums and uh, just does everything he does everything yeah he does everything he doesn't he doesn't need you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he prince just, doesn't he, need he you just he doesn't need you on four, basically yeah i mean so, you know even then i mean when he played by himself and stuff even when it was him with just like a piano i mean you're like who the hell wants the band when you're getting something like this but um right, right. Yeah, no, that's cool. So you were kind of a late bloomer too, like Monkey was a late bloomer with did Prince. You, uh, did you? Did you? I think I think you told me you saw him twice. Is that right? I'm sorry. I think you told me you uh, you saw him twice. No, only once. I only saw him twice. All right, I might. Yeah, okay. I guess I'm mistaking you with somebody else. Um, I know you're working, so I wanted to ask you if uh, if there's any specific song. That really, really stands out. Uh, we'll play it. We'll, we'll play it right now on the show. But um, I'm curious as to which is your favorite. Uh, which is my favorite? Oh my gosh! Um, Don't think too hard about it. I, 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 you know, it's very hard because there's so many good ones. For sure. And, and even like, and what I love about not just him but a lot of musicians is that 
the songs that I like more are the ones that are not on the radio. Right. Well, that, that, even better. That's, that's great. Yeah. Even better. It's even better. The songs that he's got. Yeah. You know? Uh, you know, but for me, Jesus, I don't know. Gosh darn it. Trust your first instinct. Uh, first instinct, dude. What? Your first instinct. The first song that pops in your head. A uh, little, uh, little red Corvette. That's the first song that. All right, that's, All right. That, that, that's great, man. That's that that. is a classic yeah. song. Yeah, classic. Hey, thank thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, I, I know you were busy, uh, and uh, you pulled it uh, off. No, yeah, yeah. Like I said, I just got to work, so you know, now I'm going to be here all night. Uh. If you would have called me at one in the morning on my break, I could have thought you took it out. All right, well, yeah. No, the show the show doesn't go that late. But uh, thanks again for calling, smoking. If you got them, all right, man. All right, man. You too. Thank you, sir. As uh, so you enjoy your night. All right, all right, take it easy. Take care, man. All right, brother. Thanks. Bye. Bye. That was Ugo Ruivo, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, <laughs> That's mon- great. One of Monkey's oldest friends. Uh, oh, trust me. Um, oldest friends. Very first garage band that I was ever in. Ever. Ugo was in you? He was, was in you. Oh, my God. Ugo was in you. No, that was sounds not, so dirty. He was not inside of me. <laughs> oh, my God. But uh, we managed Woo. to get to each other musically because uh, we both kind of uh, um, found talent in each other. He He could sing. Uh, better than anybody at the time that I'd ever, I'd ever met. And, uh, he was two years older than me, which was, you know, kind of uncommon as far as friendship goes when it comes to, uh, you know, early high school, mm. t- uh, you know, age. Um, but then we also realized that we shared a passion for tennis. We were on the tennis nice. team together. That's cool. And then he realized that this little punk could beat his ass. And I did almost every time. Um, yeah, I'm still waiting for another rematch whenever you want, my friend. But uh, I'm really glad I got him on the on Yeah, that the show. was cool. So you want to give him little some little red Corvette yeah, to go? Yeah, uh, but I need you to give me a little preamble because... Uh, album, what album is this on? 1999. 1999. <laughs> little red Corvette. Here you go. Okay, driving that little red Corvette. You guys know that one. You, Ugo, he couldn't even think of one. We caught him at a weird time. He was going into work. Poor guy, he's got to work all night. Yeah, I put him on the spot. I um, I texted him, uh, let him let him, let him know that we were looking and for some people to come on. And he was literally, I mean, I'm pretty sure he just kind of like ducked out of work. Rolled up to his, yeah. yeah. No, well, th- thank you for, for yeah. taking the chance to be a part of our little show here, my friend. But I'm actually, uh, I would love to keep doing this, so who, who do you, who do you Let's do that. Um, I actually, I want to sneak another song in. Okay. And it's a song that I, man, it's a very personal song, I feel. Uh, there's a lot of personal Prince songs. For whatever reason, for whatever reason, when two are in love is, when I listen to that song, I just feel like, like Prince is right in front of my face, right in front of my face, like barely at the tip of my nose singing this song. It's just bizarrely personal to me. I don't know why. Maybe because it's just this, this beautiful love song you know like come bathe with me um it's it's bodies being so close that the recording happens to just be something that's so close and personal and his vocals on that song are so good and it's such a sweet song it's a simple sentiment and it's just i don't know you you just want to kind of like eat cherries in your bathtub with your lover you know it's it's so wild it's such a good song and um we're gonna play that man that's another one of my favorites so we're gonna do that when two are in love here you go when two are in love oh god it's so sweet i can listen to that song and repeat all night long all night all night beautiful beautiful so um we're we're about an hour in to the recording okay we're an hour in cool but you gotta factor in all the songs too yeah 
So this might go on for like two and a half hours. Dude. All right, it's all right. We're not uh, you know, we're not going to talk too much more. We're going to maybe try to get one or two more people on the phone, and we're going to fast forward a little bit. Although my favorite era of Prince is Prince and the Revolution. I could talk about that all night. Um, Monkey wanted. He seems to be excited about getting into like the '90s Prince stuff. Um, you know, after Sign of the Times was. A lot of people call that like his true masterpiece, which there there's lots of masterpieces. There's Purple Rain, obviously. There's Parade, which I think is also very, very brilliant. Um, Sign of the Times. And then we start to get into kind of like the new power generation stuff. And Diamonds and Pearls happens. Yeah. Which I like. I like that record. There's a lot of amazing songs on there. I think Money Don't Matter Tonight is on that. Or is that on... Just the symbol record. There, there's just so much. Sometimes I even forget. But uh, yeah, I mean, Diamonds and Pearls. Every single off of that record was big. You had Get Off. You had Cream. You had the title track. You mentioned that um, Prince kind of got more on your radar with that stuff, right? I mean, as honestly, far as honestly, the the '90s, uh, late '80s, early '90s. Um that's when my ears essentially opened. Like, you know, before that, I was just sitting in the back of the car listening to whatever my parents were listening to. Um, yeah, well, but I wasn't, I wasn't me really, I wasn't really like, uh, listening, uh, closely to anything until, um, you know, adolescence, basically. Mm, okay. Uh, at 11, I got a drum set, you know, and, that's when you start kind of playing along to stuff. That's when you start discovering what you like, what you don't like. Uh, but at that time, clearly, I remember uh, this album coming out. And uh, it's the artist formerly known as Prince. It's uh, it's a symbol. Um, yeah, that's with um, Seven on there. Okay. Okay. That's it song that's just like knock your socks off yeah, every time yeah. but basically Unreal. you know just a young person who admires music at the time doesn't know what's going to happen with their life uh, doesn't know they're going to go down this path um as a musician but uh to see this person who was essentially super famous Decide to close himself off and become a symbol, a slave, a uh, slave. Yes, it, it, you know it strikes your attention. It, it definitely you know, strikes your curiosity. It is definitely and, intriguing. And, yeah, and, and you can't help but you know start to you know look into it and whatnot. And I just remember, for the most part, uh, his voice. Well, for on, me, on seven. Um, just, I'm thinking of a particular oh, song, but we'll watch them fall. I'm thinking of a particular song, honestly. Um, the most beautiful, you must be yeah, the most beautiful, beautiful typical girl in yeah. the world. Damn fool, I can go all night. During, during the <laughs> breakdown, the, the bridge of the song where he does like a vocal solo, uh huh. At that Time, I guess. I never heard anything like that. I've never heard anybody do a vocal solo. I've heard people do guitar solos, clearly. You know, I've heard people do all kinds of solos, drum solos, bass solos, piano solos, but never have I had a once heard somebody do a vocal solo, which is essentially what he was doing because he went three octaves. You know what I'm saying? Like he <laughs> he started he high, had all the he octaves. went low. He started oh, yeah. low, he went high, and he did it in about 35 seconds. <laughs> and at that point, uh, I kind of realized, uh, this guy is an amazing singer. He's got, he's got an amazing voice. He's not all falsetto, which no. essentially was kind of what I just kind of knew him for. Okay. You know, with, uh, uh, with songs like um, uh, Kiss. You know what I mean? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like the, even even that the, song is I was a so huge, nuts. Yeah, I was a huge uh, I was a huge fan of Batman. Um, oh yeah, that so, soundtrack you know, the, 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 is so you know, mint. The, the soundtrack to, to the it. first Batman with Michael Keaton. Um, but all of a sudden, like I'm hearing this little vocal solo, and it just fucking grabbed me, and I just could hear that song over and over again, just because I couldn't right. wait for the vocal solo, and that literally is just something that just kind of became part of my DNA. Because I could definitely listen to that song 
over and over again. The just most because of that, girl in the world. Just because of that vocal solo. Just because. Just because. You know what I'm saying? And at the time, you know, we'd probably just gotten like MTV or VH1 or something. And cool. like the video was kind of cute. Yes, you're whatever. discovering more. Yeah. Um, other than that, I mean, that was my um, introduction into Prince for the most part. And like I said, I honestly, I didn't really, really become a fan until he died but um you know when you start looking back at things you start realizing the little moments that you kind of capture no that's cool that's also a really sure. cool a cool memory um, um i i like that era of prince i like the npg era there's just so much but when prince put out musicology to me he really really Pulled me back in quick, fast, and hard. And, uh, God, I, I love that record so much. There's a lot going on on that record that reminded me of some, like, old school stuff that reminded me of a bunch of different stuff. There's a song on there that I was blasting at top volume before I came over that I would love to play. We could put another song in here from Musicology. It's If I Was the Man in Your Life. To me, that's like a heavy Prince song. The, the, the last 30 seconds of it is maybe like some wacky free jazz. But it's like, it's a heavy song. It comes in and it's, it's, it's so tight and solid. The drums are sick. Um, the Everything about it is just like cocksure. It's really, really such a good song. So we should totally rock that because I love musicology. I love that record. So if I was the man in your life. Let's do it. Yes, yes. Hopefully you turn that up to 11. Right? Like the guys in Man of War would tell you that uh their amps go up to like 12 or something <laughs> or something ridiculous like that um so we're gonna we're gonna try to get another another phone guest i'm gonna call a friend of mine who lives in north carolina that i never speak to on the phone that's I'm, cool i'm I, I think she might get scared even i don't even know if she has do my wanna, number do you want to like text her let her know nah, man no that's no way the spontaneity yeah. is all part of this so let's see if this can happen she might not even have my number in her phone anymore Oh man, this isn't her number anymore. <laughs> Your friend is kind of mannish. All right, so my I, friend I is kind of mannish. Yeah, what friend? I, uh, you just said you were going to call somebody, and it's just a dude picked up talking about subscriptions. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? This is not my fucking number. Anymore. I think I have Mark Zuckerberg's phone number in here somewhere. Yeah. Can you tell him to maybe sponsor our podcast? <laughs> tell him to suck a dick. Oh, hey, hey. Um. All right, so. We're we're here fiddling with our phones like, like typical Americans. Um, but what else, monkey? I mean, well, okay. We I, kind I, of fast I, forwarded a lot. I, I there, there's wanna, a lot to talk about. I do want to kind of uh, talk a little bit about what my experience has been uh, recently, as far as. Uh, getting to know Prince. Um, Because it's more recent. You just, you know what, let's talk about this because you mentioned it a little bit. You watched the documentary today. I I literally had to uh, cram for this podcast because (laughs) I wanted to make sure that it wasn't just a solo show. It wasn't just soda. Uh, I wanted to be on the show and at the same time, I wanted to be able to speak intelligently Mm -hmm. about, uh, about Prince. And, uh, it, it's, it wasn't, it wasn't difficult at all because luckily through the, uh, you know, miracle of technology, I was able to go on YouTube, type Prince documentary 2018. And I, literally, you know, a couple of months after his death, they were already coming up with documentaries using, yeah, there was a action, lot of stuff using real, you know, using actors who look like Prince who, you know, they can't, uh, they, you know, they can't sing as good as him, but you know, yet they try right. to, you know, portray a, a prince singing or rehearsing or whatever. But um, what I got out of it, what I got out of this one documentary, um, was essentially just how sad uh, 
his life kind of was. I don't want to say essentially how sad it was. I don't want to. I don't want to be definitive because it's all. It's all. It's all just a bunch of people uh, speaking their opinions and and saying how they felt. But um, from what I got, he had a. He had shitty parents in a gist. He, uh, you know, he 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 had trouble reconciling with his mother, with his father. Mm. Uh, his father was a musician who was jealous of his uh, his fame, mm. uh, who never took the time to actually try to be a, a good father, be a good mentor. Um, and it just keeps coming up throughout the documentary, but more and more towards the end that, I mean, people who are closest to him keep saying that he was the loneliest person in the world. And, I mean, before you say anything, just let me finish this thought. They didn't say that, like, as if it were, like, hyperbole. Like, they didn't say that as if, you know, he was, yeah, he was the loneliest person in the world. He would, you know, watch TV all night and not answer his phone. I mean, they, they said it as if he was incapable of any kind of emotional attachment to anybody. And the few times that he did truly try, uh, from what I took from the documentary, when he got married... Um, First to Maite, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. from when uh, he... Uh, well... I know where when, you're going. From when he first found out that he was going to have a child. Hmm. Which was uh, huge, because I remember that he was on Oprah, believe yeah, it or not. Yeah. And he brought Oprah into the house, and the, there was like the baby's room and everything was really touching. But what you're, not, what you're not expressing is that that interview with Oprah was after his baby died. Was it? Okay. Okay. All right. right. So they kinda, it kind of gives, right, it 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 gives you an idea of, of how in denial he was. Now, I don't want to get into it because I have kids. I hate even the idea of speaking uh, negatively or ill about anyone's child. Um, but um, he was a troubled soul. He was raised uh, the way no one should be raised. He had the wrong parents for the kind of person that he was. He was loved and adored by the people who were closest to him, yet they always felt like they weren't enough. All the love that they could give him wasn't enough. Uh, He was isolated. You know, he built a fortress for himself. He was, I guess what I'm trying to say is... Literally built a fortress. If you don't don't really know who Prince was, and if you're curious as to who he was as a person, because hard-pressed to find anybody on this planet who knows who he was musically, but if you really, really want to know who he was as a person, you know, just be prepared because it's 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 a it's a tragedy it's a it's a sad story he should not have gone the way he did mm-hmm. he should not have been alone as long as he was mm-hmm. he he should have he should have he was he, he deserved so much more and you learn these things by looking into it you don't learn these things by listening to a song or watching you know uh, julia roberts in a bathtub with the headphones on, you know, you learn these things by, by digging a little bit. If you ever want to learn about anybody, obviously. And what I learned is that, uh, one of the greatest musicians, uh, who knows, one of the greatest people possibly, uh, in the last, in the last, in the last, yes, in the last hundred Mm -hmm. years, easily. Uh, to, 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 to be alive, to be a, to a part of this world. He suffered. He suffered a lot. And he hit it so well. He hit it in his music. You know, you could, you could read it in, 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 in the lyrics of Purple Rain. You can read it in the lyrics of When Doves Cry. You know? Oh, well, yeah. These I mean, are, that, those are, are also very personal but songs. But they're also, I mean, these are essentially him, you know. Reaching uh, out as yeah, much as he could. Yeah, 
Yeah. And I, honestly, Purple Rain is still so gut wrenching. It is. Just it unbelievable. is unbelievable. But the, even the story of when doves cry, you know, his father caught him making out with the girl. His father kicks him out of the house and doesn't let him back in for days. Mm. His, he decides to call his father, asking to let him back in. His father refuses. He decides to call his sister to beg his father to let him back in. His sister calls him back and says, all you got to do is call your father. All you got to do is call dad and apologize. He goes to a pay phone. And he apologizes in tears, crying, and his father refuses to let him back in the house. And that's what the song basically is about. It's him in a phone booth for hours, crying, you know? I mean, this is some deep shit. This is a 12-year-old kid who can't get into his house because his father's a piece of shit, you know? I mean, I'm sure there's people out there who have shitty parents. Right, well, of course, I mean... but. Yeah, he fucking, he had to deal with some stuff. And a lot of it, which I'm not going to get into, a lot of it had to do with religion. A lot of it. They were Seventh-day Adventists, and his father was a hypocrite of hypocrites. His mother was the wife of a hypocrite who was a hypocrite herself. These are things that I've watched and and, and, and listened to people people talk about, so I'm not not a biographer. But still, uh, to it. If you want to, if you really want to get to know who Prince was, please, you know, dig a little bit, dig a little bit. I mean, the music alone would be enough. It should be enough. It is enough. And there's a lot out there. Yeah. But, um, the guy could have been so much more. He he should, he should still be alive. Of course. Absolutely. And I mean, the whole religion thing with Prince could be like a whole another gigantic topic with him being Jehovah's witness and whatever. And, um, you know, going 20 years, 20, but, but the whole Jehovah's Witness 30 thing is, years a, is ago. a fucking con because I'll tell you right now, he had just lost his kid. Right. You know well, saying? he was when you, when you're searching when you're that for, lost, you know, you're that yeah. lost. Anybody could just scoop you up. Right. I mean, but he cleaned up his act. He didn't curse ever again after that. Everything was a little more, uh, reserved. You know I mean? This was a guy that sang songs about incest, which does, were just does that, does that remarkable make, songs. Does that make you, know? you better though? I mean, no, just I'm not, I'm just, no, I'm just, that's my it's point. all part of the that's, conversation, that's my, you know, but that's my point. But, you know um, it, 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 uh, he was taken advantage of at the end of his life by religion. He was manipulated by religion at a young age. Uh, it was always, you know, I just remember an uh, interview with Oprah. I think I want to say Oprah, maybe even Larry King, where you know he he mentioned like homosexuality as as being you know terrible. You know what I'm saying? Like it, uh, lack of better words there, but it's it's all because of just uh, you know the way he was brought up, the way and and the kind mm-hmm. of stuff that he had to deal with uh, you know, at the end of his life. But um, I, I I kind of feel like he didn't believe what he said. You know what I'm saying? I kind of feel like he only kind of... Well, I mean, there were times when he would say one thing and then say another I just thing. Refused, but I refuse to believe a person that talented, that into, you know, that connected with the universe could be that narrow-minded. And I just I just feel like there had to have been well, some Well, no, I mean, there, there might have been a minute... But again, say, like with with Wendy and Lisa being a big part of the revolution, who are absolutely brilliant, I adore Wendy and Lisa. They're insane, remarkable musicians, and to to couple them up with Prince was just like this phenomenal, amazing thing. I mean, they were together, you know, and they've since they they still work together, but they're not like romantically involved anymore. The revolution is still a thing. They've been doing a lot of great, amazing shows. I saw them play last year at BB Kings and it was incredible. They did an amazing job without Prince. They're remarkable musicians. Um, you know, for a while, I think Prince kind of wanted to use their sexuality, you know, as a way to make the revolution a little bit more, risque and different or whatever and there was like some ambiguity there and then they could do this they could do they couldn't do that and how he kind of orchestrated the whole the whole show for a while and then like you said he might have passed a few comments with with oh this shouldn't be and that shouldn't be whatever but then don't tell me that prince 
never had some sort of romantic involvement with another guy. Sure. That would be ludicrous. Yeah, that would, yeah, that would. And, and I think, and that's, you know, but I also think that that's, that's um, the, the kind of a uh, genetic imprinting that happens when you're abused emotionally and psychologically when you're a child, you know what I mean? Who, who knows? He might've been born homosexual, but his mom would show him at the Just age, beat at, the age at the age of t- at the age literally at the age of ten, his mother started showing him um, Playboy magazines well, and leave him a, leaving them around the house. No matter what, you know what honey, saying? you can't. You can't you can't change that. Well, okay, okay. So, just just to give you just to school you on on something real quick. And we do have another phone call. Great. I just so. want I just want to get this out there. There there is something uh, that happens. Um, the argument might be: Are you born uh, gay, or is it something you acquire through environment? Right. But now let's just say that the argument is this: You're born gay. All right. It's genetic. Okay, I was born straight. Okay, but there is an eight, there. There's this. There's this window that boys, especially boys, all right, and it tends to happen with boys, not with women, not with girls. But there is a window, uh, and uh, I'm I'm taking this information from uh, somebody who uh, I've listened to many many times. But there's a there's a window where sexually boys can be manipulated. Um, where they start acquiring fetishes. Mm. Uh, and I want to say it's somewhere between the ages of 7 and maybe 11. Okay. It's, it's like this time in a boy's life where psychologically they're so malleable sexually that uh, if, for example, they get molested by a family member, which is horrible, Later down the line, it's very, very possible that that experience in their life actually turns into a fetish. It actually turns into a way that they find pleasure. Mm. So that's why you have, for example, and I don't mind saying this, but that's why you have uh, people like Leonardo DiCaprio, who is clearly homosexual, yet he has girlfriends, okay? Um, well, I mean, look at everything that happened with Kevin Spacey. Same thing. I mean, Kevin Spacey, I think he's just straight up homosexual. But you well, know, yeah, look, at his, mean, bro- look at his brother. Have you seen his brother? But, Jesus I mean, Christ. No, but my point is, you know, in Hollywood, you guys, people like Kevin, like, like, you know, I don't want to name drop, but it sucks, and I shouldn't have said that to begin with. But still, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio was a child, a child actor, and it very, very clearly something happened at, at a very young age where, you know, heterosexuality was supposed to be normal, but it's clear that he is not. All right? You can argue with me all you want. But fetishes are not sexuality. You understand? Mm. So going back to Prince, for example, anybody can argue that he was born maybe homosexual. You can argue that he was born heterosexual. Mm. But something could have happened during his formative years, during that little time frame, that created these fetishes. And it's possible that it's the reverse. He could have been born homosexual. Yet, these heterosexual... Well, I mean, these we'll hetero- never know that. But, my, so. that's, but this is what I'm trying to say. The possibilities are there. You understand? Uh, just like you're saying, you know, he must have had himself, uh, you know, yeah, some, some, some guy mates here and there. Yet, he was a ladies man. He fucking, he got married to women. He, mm. he had sex with women. You know, it's it's hard to say because it's such a um, it's such an open topic, um, and I wish we didn't really get too much into it. But um, there was something I was going to say, and I totally lost track. Uh, that, were you able to get your friend? Yeah, I had the uh, the the North Carolinian friend whose phone number I did not have correct. Okay, I I sent her a quick message on. Great. The book of face. What and, I was uh, going to say cake. is this, and this is totally. And I've got a new phone number. For those who ready. don't know, Prince is the reason why there's a uh, parental advisory uh, note on albums in the '90s. He, I can't remember which album it was, but the lyrics were something about some chick who he saw. Oh, it was Darling Nikki. Thank you. Yeah, that was from Purple Rain. All right, so from Purple... Masturbating with the magazine. Because of... Because, little trivia here, guys. Because Foo Fighters of, because does a great of, cover of that. Do they really? Yeah. Because of Purple Rain, what? because of that song, 
the parent, darling the parental advisor Tipper Gore was all like hey, that's it Woo! Child. Yeah, get t- that sticker on yeah. there. I remember my first stickered record. I was, oh god, am I going to be able to buy this? People didn't yeah. give a shit. They yeah, like, it was uh, on the record. Was, Who cares? I was buying Guns and Roses, and, and you know that. But personal, uh, what is it? Uh, what's the sticker say exactly? Uh, um, on what? Personal advisory note. What does it say? Um, parental advisory. Par- parental. Explicit lyrics. That's explicit it, yeah. content. That was the fault of Prince. That was Prince's doing. <laughs> All right. Just like Richard Pryor is the reason why there was a seven-second uh, delay on live broadcasting, <laughs> right, which everybody should know. Prince is the reason why there was a parental advisory. Awesome. Note. So right, there's the sticker. a good history lesson. So let's get my friend on the phone here. Let's give her a ring-a-ding. Ring-a-ding-ding. Doot. Do do do, yeah, child. Ooh, let's see. She said she was just trying to go to sleep, so she might be a little, a little sleepy, a little flea. Morning. She's gonna be like, I fell asleep. You waited too long. Hello. Hey. Hey. So, so you are now. Yeah, I'm getting another call, and I don't know who that is, too, but it's all right. It's going to have to wait. So you are actually right now on the Music Survival Guide podcast. Okay. We are recording. We, we are recording. Uh, th- this is my, my friend Steph in Wilmington, North Carolina. She's a fellow musician, artist, weirdo, outcast, funky child. Um, like the rest of the bunch, uh, we are doing a Prince tribute tonight, and I know that when I wrote my little piece on the blog two years ago, you, uh, expressed, uh, a lot about what I wrote and you went on to kind of share your own thoughts about the piece because I had said that. A lot of artists that we love, you know, that we relate to, that we listen to, come and go, and you know, it is what it is. Everybody, people, everybody dies. People die. Our family members die. These artists that we love die. But for whatever reason, when Prince passed away, it was like a distant relative kind of died for all of us. Like the world got smaller. Oh, yeah. So, how Absolutely. did you? How did you? I mean, how did you? Because I know you. You know, you're very passionate about music and all this stuff too. What uh? How did you feel when when Prince passed? Um, I felt like somebody punched me in the face. <laughs> yeah. Because I mean, it, it it for most of us, if not all of us, it came out of nowhere. Well, yeah, for sure, it was definitely a surprise. It was a surprise and to me. He he was kind of immoral. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. not that anybody truly is in reality, but I mean, you know. Like, I mean, most people my age, because I'm going to be 43 in May, showing my age, uh, (laughs) most people my age, I mean, I found out about them through the radio, and the first thing I heard was, want to be your lover. Nice, nice. And, you know. I love that song. The the parental units and everything at that time, he was too controversial. Yeah, we we just, we just, we just got off of the, the whole conversation, uh, that because of literally because of darling Nikki, we have like explicit lyric uh, stickers on our records now. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that whole thing exploded, and of course that just added to it. Like, okay, well, I have to hear this now. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, if yeah. If you hadn't heard it, if you hadn't heard it, you had to go get it and That's listen right. to it. Cool. And it, you know, it wasn't just it wasn't just that. I mean, even though I was young the first time I heard him, it wasn't just oh he's shocking or quote-unquote shocking, whatever, it was just so good. Right. I mean, he was just so good. There was no way around it. There, like you said, there are artists that come and go for whatever reasons, but just from the beginning, he was so good. Yeah, You man. know, and I was so young then, I wasn't a musician, and I was just a kid listening to music, and I just knew. Like, holy cow, and of course I thought he was hot. <laughs> well, know? yeah, I mean, how could you, you know? not? Sure. <laughs> and I was like, you know, when I first got to look at him on MTV or whatever, it was back when they showed videos. Uh, yeah. I was like, okay, the complete package. He's passionate. He's talented. He's hot. He's like, you know, and of course, I was I was young. I was like, oh, oh my God, this is, this is everything. Cool. It's kind of like hearing Led Zeppelin for the first time. Right, nice. Like, this is everything. That's awesome. Yeah, you know, he definitely, I mean, 
so many influences of mine, as you know. You know, one of my biggest is like Jeff Buckley and right. guys like that who weren't really around for that long that we knew of. But he just, he was always there. He was always there for, I mean, his music was always there. Yeah, no, it was, was and, it, and it will always be there still, which is really amazing. You know? Oh, God, yeah. And Cora, you know, my daughter, who's 17 now, mm. the whole time she was growing up, he was there with her, too. Yeah, no, that's cool. That's like what my sisters kind of did for me. You know, that's how I learned about Prince when I was really young. And one of my sisters, more than the other, was listening to Prince heavily. And I was like, oh, this is an interesting thing, you know? Yeah. Well, so. I mean, because at that time, I mean, I listened to everything. I mean, growing up in New York, I listened to everything. Right so, on, for you sure. Know, mom and dad had real to reels of Janis Joplin and all those cats and... You know, but they listened to everything, and then when he came up, even though my parents were like, oh, we don't know about this, you know, influence or whatever, they still recognized he was, he was a substantial. Force. Yeah, no, that's yeah, awesome. From the beginning. No, that's super so, cool. I mean, so, you're... He's always been there. <laughs> you know, that's beautiful. So, for you, I Want to Be Your Lover was, like, your first encounter. That was the first song I heard. Cool. That I love yeah, that song too. That was the and first one. yeah, we've been splicing songs into the podcast too. So for you, my dear friend, we are gonna play I Wanna Be Your Lover. All right. Nice. <laughs> and um awesome. it's really cool. I mean, I know we don't ever really get on the phone too much and we should probably have an actual conversation sometime, but thanks for, you know, <laughs> hanging out and being a part oh, of this yeah. uh, being a part of this thing. Hopefully you listen to it oh. and share it with a friend. Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're welcome, of course. And, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm terrible at phone calls, too. So. Nah, that's cool, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For sure. So, thank you so much. We're going to send the love down yeah. south. We're going to play I Want to Be Your Lover. <laughs> We're going to dedicate it to you. And I will speak with oh. you real soon, all right? All right. All right, girl. I love you a lot. All right, I'll talk to you later. Bye. All right, bye. Cool, what a nice treat, man. I never get to speak to her. But um, so we're gonna play "I Want to Be Your Lover" for Steph, sending it down south. We got to get close to wrapping this up, but we are gonna have another phone call uh, in a minute. And Monkey, anything else from you that you really want to kind of throw out there? Um, no, I, I feel like I've spoken too much, actually. <laughs> I feel like I may have uh, crossed the line. Okay. Um, well. But um, I I guess I want to just say that uh, it, it's hard to find, uh, it's hard to find musicians that, uh, that really kind of get to you. You know, get to the, get to the bottom, and you get to the, get to your core. Yeah, um, shaky hard like that for sure. Yeah, no, and and, and he definitely did, and, and unfortunately, he did it after he died, which is really difficult to do, if you ask me. You know, what huh. I mean, I, I, how many people really f- touch your life, and then how many people do it after they're gone? Um, I don't know. I think. Uh, I think the world needs more people like him. Yeah, well. I think that uh, the music industry uh, lost. Uh, Not even you can't even say one of a kind. I just want to say it's like it's like the world losing a whole chain of mountains. I mean, it's just mm. a, a huge piece just missing, you know. And uh, right, what are you going to do other than? Um, just listen, you know. Just, just, just go in. Listen to what he was, what was, what he, what he was capable of doing, what he was uh, capable of composing. Uh, respect the, uh, respect the art, respect the, uh, the talent. And um, if you want to dig a little deeper, you know, learn about the man, learn about the person, who he was, because right. he truly was a sad story, and it sucks. It makes you kind of think twice. Right, and don't let whatever controversy that surrounds his death kind of like taint everything that had happened because that is a part of the the sad story, really. And um, like Monkey said, you know, it's unfortunate he should still be here. Things should have been different. 
But that that goes for a lot of us, our our neighbors, our friends, our family members, these icons that we look up to. Um, I want to play a song off of the the final studio release, Hit and Run, Phase 2, called Revelation. It's such a monstrously moving piece. So we're going to do that. We're going to get one more phone call, and then we're going to go out on one final song. We hope you guys dug this. This was really neat, and it was just fun. It's just good to talk about this stuff. So um, here's Revelation of Hit and Run Phase 2. Yeah, Revelation, guys. Uh, recent, recent prints. And I remember the first time that I heard that, I was like, holy moly. That was like I had to stop and go back to it and um, just let people hear that song. I love that record. That record was like, oh man, this is like another Prince record that I know I'm going to love. And um, so anyway, we want to try one more phone call because we do want to wrap up. Uh, One of my dearest, nearest and dearest, um, she is, she like lives by the Prince sword and and dies by the Prince sword. So we're going to see if we can get her on the phone. She said five minutes, but if she's here, great. If not, then she's going to the boat is going to set sail without her on this one, unfortunately. So we're going to try this out. This is this is Sister Jem that we're going to get on the phone. Ring, ring. Let's see what we can do here. And uh, this will be our last phone call. And then we'll wrap up. And then we'll play one more thing for you. Let's see. She was beeping through before when I had Steph from North Carolina. So I knew it was her. I was like, oh, man. But um, it's all right. I don't think it's going to happen. Oh, and there she is. But the it is, it is, is full, and the mailbox is full. <laughs> Anyways, so um, sorry, Jim, you are too cool for school. We actually went on a Prince cruise last week around Manhattan, Statue oh. of Liberty, and there was this band, Tribute Band, Erotic City, that played the whole time. They were good. They weren't great. Um, there's this band though, The Purple Experience, which is phenomenal. Okay, saw them once, and I'm not a big tribute band person. They're awesome, but. It is that time of year, so we figured we would do this little thing. It was it was fun. I enjoyed hanging out with Monkey and talking about this stuff and learning together. And I thought it was cool that he kind of dug deep and did a little bit of homework. Because like he was saying to you, you know, he really he's kind of newer to the Prince game. And a lot of people, somebody's always going to be new to the Prince game because someone will always discover Prince, which is really really nice. Uh, you know, for any artist. Um, so yeah, Music Survival Guide, thanks. And uh, we hope you've been enjoying everything that we've been putting out there. We're going to continue to do it for as long as we can. We're going to go out with now something that is incredibly appropriate, I think, off of the parade record from the music from Under the Cherry Moon. Sometimes it snows in April. Uh, gut-wrenchingly beautiful. I've cried many a time. So here we go. Sometimes it snows in April. Good night, people. Good night, everybody. And uh, it's very fitting because we are in April, and it clearly has. It did snow. snow. Yeah, it did snow. Every time it snows in April, I I think of that song, and I'm like, man. And it's just, it's again, it's so poetic that the guy would would go go in April. Well, he was from Minneapolis, so it's a little farther north. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Um, So yeah, man. Thanks. Rest in peace, my friend. Rest in peace. For sure. Yeah, thanks, uh, Prince, man. I'm glad I got to uh, learn a little bit about you, and hopefully uh, your uh, influence on me is, uh, you know, it doesn't go untold. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, man, again, we can go all night, but here you go. Sometimes it snows in April. Thanks, everybody. Good night.